crime. Um, this morning I'm pleased to welcome uh, the Honourable the Minister for, for uh, Justice, Honourable Michael Keenan, and the Minister, Police Minister, who would need no introduction, uh, Tony Piccolo. I also wish to introduce uh, Matt Varley. Matt's the Senior AFP Officer in South Australia. Um, the, the order of proceedings are this morning that uh, both Ministers will, will uh, say a few words and then there will be questions after that, uh, which you obviously uh, can, can ask what, what you wish. Um, about in April last, I'm sorry, in the early last, early in 2014, SAPO was approached by the AFP, uh, and we were asked about our, our uh, willingness to establish uh, a joint anti-child exploitation team in South Australia, and uh, obviously we uh, we saw that as a very welcome opportunity, uh, and the official launch of, uh, of that arrangement is this morning, and uh, I'll invite the honourable minister to do that. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you, Tom, uh, and it's good to be here with my uh, colleague Tony Piccolo, Minister for Police in South Australia, uh, also Commander Matt Varley from the Australian Federal Police. We're all too aware, unfortunately, about uh, the increasing volume uh, of those who are using the internet and new technologies to prey on the most vulnerable people in our society, and that is children. Unfortunately uh, and disturbingly, that is a trend that is going to continue to increase. And we need to do all we can to combat exploitation of children within the online environment. And to do that, we need a new coordinated multi-agency response. And today we've just formally recognised, Tony and I have just formally recognised uh, the signing of and the establishment of a new model here in South Australia, a model that we're rolling out all around the country of joint anti-child exploitation teams, uh, which we know as Jackets. And this is a new operating model for the Australian Federal Police uh, and for the police here in South Australia. Uh, as uh, uh, as um, Tom was just saying, um, the jacket model has been operational in South Australia since January, uh, and that's seen AFP officers co-located with their South Australian counterparts uh, alongside the South Australian Police Special Crimes Investigation Branch. This is the first time that we've seen uh, federal police officers co-located with their South Australian colleagues. Investigation into matters of online child exploitation uh, are going to be continue to be investigated in this way all around the country. Uh, the information is received in the Australian Federal Police's assessment centre is Canberra, in Canberra. Um, it's then triaged and sent through to the relevant jacket, um, which are now operational in most jurisdictions around the country. In the past three months with the South Australian Jacket, uh, we've received over 30 uh, online child exploitation referrals from the AFP Assessment Centre, and those referrals are currently being investigated. I want to make it very clear that we will continue to go after perpetrators of online child abuse all around the country, uh, and particularly here in South Australia. Uh, this new model is going to make sure that we prosecute Australians who would seek to exploit children, whether they're exploiting children uh, here in the online environment or whether they're doing it overseas. Uh, we will make sure that we are going after them uh, with all the powers we have at our disposal, and this new model will help us do exactly that. I'd like to congratulate the Australian Federal Police and South Australian Police for this milestone. Uh, this is a milestone that's going to enhance the safety of our children. It's also going to enhance the safety of children who are vulnerable to abuse uh, in the international environment as well. Uh, we will continue to do everything we can to stop this horrendous crime, uh, and the signing today is a step forward in making sure that we've got the uh, combined resources of policing agencies in South Australia and federally working together to stop online child sexual abuse. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, now I invite Minister Piccolo to say a few words. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Tom. Um, my federal colleague, the Honourable Minister, has actually covered most of the, the area. So all I'd like to add is that uh, we welcome this initiative. Uh, we thank the Commonwealth uh, on this initiative, and we believe this initiative, through the establishment of these joint child exploitation teams, will enhance our capabilities to make sure that our response is quicker and uh, more uh, it is quicker and more efficient when dealing with child sex abuse cases. Importantly, in this new online environment uh, where people do things to children, uh, know no boundaries, whether they state or national or international boundaries. And this joint approach makes sure that we put our resources in quickly to respond and identify those perpetrators very quickly 
and protect our children. So it's a great initiative and that, uh, from a SAPOL's point of view, we welcome the, the ability to work with our federal colleagues and also the federal government and that uh, I, I believe this, this approach will deliver better outcomes and keep our children safe. Thank you. I know that we've heard some of it before, but can you just explain that joint approach, exactly how long you'll be working together and how that will actually fit? I'll do it in the general terms, and I'll leave the operational things to the people who deal with it every day. But what it means is you get information in, you share that information, you interrogate information, and importantly, you put that information in the context. The important thing about having a joint team is that you have, you have a whole piece of information. By bringing them together and interrogating them as a team, you actually get a better context and you know, the response is more appropriate. You can do that apart, that takes longer, and there's also, there can be issues around miscommunication. By bringing people together, you're able to have that information assessed very quickly and respond very quickly. Thank you, sir. I now invite to any further questions, thank you. Uh, through the referrals in the past three months um, from the Assessment Centre in Canberra, is that uh, more than usual? Uh, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think it is more than, it was more than usual in terms of uh, this is this initiative just, that has just commenced, uh, but um, out of those 30, I think there's been some eight arrests and four reports, I, I think as I came in this morning, works out about one a week and that, that would certainly not be a number, regrettably uh, less than what would be normal. But the, the, the systems and structures that are now in place uh, enables us to um, some of the offence, some of the offending is against Commonwealth legislation uh, and some is against state legislation. Well, now the teams go out as one, and uh, whichever is the appropriate strategy in terms of you know, where the offending is or what the offending is, uh, they're able to adopt the particular legislation, and that legislation is slightly different in terms of uh, you know, how you get warrants and uh, the actual the charging of the offences. So, to answer your question, I don't think it is. It would be a greater number than normal, but it's certainly we're able to handle that, that uh, workload. Uh, with more efficiently now than we did in the past. Can you give some examples of how this has been difficult to pursue in the past before this task force was set up? Obviously, the um, would have been. Well, before, uh, in some of the offending, we would have to actually go to the AFP and say uh, to, to enlist their services, and while they're not most willing to come along and, and, and to do their part. Uh, now, now that determination and the assessment, as Minister Piccolo said, can be done straight away in-house. You know, they can decide uh, do, what do we know about this. They can feed the information back to the assessment centre in Canberra if necessary. We can work up that information and identify if, if that particular offender is uh, known or that, you know, that, that approach, uh, the internet type approach, is occurring elsewhere and they're able to identify that offender as uh, committing other offences elsewhere or you know, same information being disseminated by one particular person. So it's really bringing it all together. So the AFP appro approached SA Police last January, is that right? And what was the reason for that? Was it a growing problem that you needed to get on top of? <clears throat> That's right. The AFP's um, responsibility here is to work with our state and territory colleagues. Um, this is smart policing. This is an opportunity for us to connect the specialist expertise and roles of the AFP through to the, the long-standing expertise and, and, and experience that, that state police, in particular SAPOL, have in these sorts of fields. To give you an in indication, the AFP receives about 5,000 pieces of intelligence um, from international partners, mostly through what's called the National Centre for Missing and Exploited Children in the United States. Um, each year, that centre receives um, referrals and pieces of intelligence from online service providers, um, e-commerce platforms from around the world, um, and those pieces of intelligence are shared out to law enforcement agencies around, around the globe. Our job is to identify the pieces of intelligence that are actionable, that can be progressed into investigations, and then work with our, our colleagues here in South Australia to make those jobs happen quicker and faster. The value that the AFP brings to these types of investigations is our international reach and some of the specialist technical capabilities that we can also offer. Our, uh, our three federal agents here um, embedded with SAPOL bring particular skills uh, in terms of uh, international investigations, but we also, one of the, one of the officers is also a, a specialised digital forensics anal analysis expert um, who now has the ability here in-house with SAPOL to analyse um, storage mediums and computers that are found in search warrants. So this is about bringing together the skills and expertise of both agencies um, and essentially protecting kids. And the, the smarter and more faster ways we can do that, um, uh, the better, I say. Are we likely to see more arrests? 
from this? I'd certainly hope so. And the track record of about uh, nine arrests and four reports or summonses over the past three months should give you an indication that we're interested uh, and very committed to stepping up um, the prosecution of offenders who, who would download or share this type of material in South Australia. Um, and there's certainly a commitment from every one of the investigators in the team to work as hard and as fast as they can to protect children in this state. Do you have a specific target? Sorry? Do you have any targets for <coughs> The target is absolutely anyone in this state and indeed the country who would seek to download, share, possess or even upload child exploitation material. We do not discriminate against any person uh, or individual who might um, be involved in that sort of activity. Do you believe this is... Has no, not at all. Not at all. This is about identifying the intelligence, um, pursuing those investigations through to conclusion. And as you've seen, 21 search warrants have been executed in South Australia in the past three months. Nine men have been arrested um, of varying ages, um, and further four more have been summoned to appear in front of court. Um, as I said, our message is pretty clear here. If you download, if you manufacture, if you distribute child exploitation material in this state, this team is here to take care of that. This 50% increase in the number of referrals you've had from the US National Centre there, uh, what, what's that down to, do you think? I think it's about uh, the, the growing, um, uh, well, I'll be, to be frank, um, uh, the problem of child exploitation material around the world um, is growing. Um, but the mechanisms for detecting it and reporting it and actioning the intelligence are also becoming more sophisticated. So the National, Missing, the National Centre for Missing and Exploited Children in the United States is a very sophisticated, individual, uh, sophisticated operation. Um, they receive reports of intelligence um, from online providers, um, predominantly in the United States, but also based around the world, um, and, and that we are getting better and we are getting faster at detecting that and actioning it. Um, and you've seen the results of those um, around the country. So that increase in referrals is largely due to the fact that there's more Australians out there accessing child pornography at the moment? I can't say whether there are more Australians out there accessing child pornography. What I can tell you is that we're getting faster and better at detecting it, um, and the people who do access it and do download it should be alert to the fact that they can't hide. The 50% increase in terms of the so number of reports? Yeah, yeah. So what were the, what did it go from to? We can get you those figures, um, but to give you an indication, you know, last year there was about 5,000 um, reports, and already this year, in the first three months of the year, the AFP has received about 1,500 reports, I think it is, um, from, from the US uh, and our counterparts overseas. And that's the benefit, as I said, that's the benefit the AFP can bring to this type of work. Our international reach and the international scope that we bring um, is a specialist role that we can offer to our colleagues here in South Australia. And we'll deal with the information as it comes in. Are uh, similar task force like this set up um, in other parts of Australia? They are. Um, we're, we're setting up task forces from the AFP in, uh, in every state and territory. Um, we already have operational task forces here in South Australia, in Victoria, the Northern Territory and WA, and arrangements are being made to imp implement a similar uh, mechanism in New South Wales and, uh, and Queensland. And I understand, Minister, you're headed off to Sydney tomorrow for this very same issue. That's right. Yes. Is this the first one, or uh, is this the first one created? Uh, no, we've been rolling out this model all around the country, um, but uh, and obviously this this model has been operational in South Australia since the beginning of the year. Um, we know that it's working well for the past three and a half months in which it has been operational, uh, and we know that where we've rolled it out in other parts of the country, it's also working very well, and we'll continue to do that. Um, because we know when we're sending federal police to work side by side with their state and territory colleagues on an issue that is important as this, um, that that gives us the coordinated and multi-agency approach that we know is going to catch perpetrators of online child sexual abuse. What lengths uh, are people going to cover their tracks? In the uh, look, it's probably more an operational... Uh, I'm not the expert on that subject, but as we know, uh, and as, as Matt alluded to, um, eventually they'll be caught. Um, I'm, I'm most certain, and I, and I haven't got the expertise to be able to talk on, on how they do hide their tracks, but certainly, as, as Matt said, the technology that we're using is, is, is increasing as fast as what their, their, uh, their, their uh, use of technology is, and hopefully we get in front of theirs and, and those people are identified. Um, Matt, I'm not sure if you have more of an idea, but is a lot of this being 
Uh, yes and no. Um, you'd be surprised to learn that a, a lot of the reports we receive are through mainstream online platforms, Facebook, Instagram. Those are the platforms where people can commence to, to start to share details of, um, of sharing this type of child exploitation material. And it's important to note this is not just about sharing images. This is about uh, identifying the networks of people who might share images, um, who might create or, or distribute this type of material. And it's about the commerce providers uh, sorry, it's about the, the, the e-commerce behind the distribution of that material because a lot of this is done on fee for service or, or a payment model. So we know that people here in Australia are paying for this material to be downloaded from offshore and there are exploited children on the end of those cameras in places like uh, Southeast Asia who we're also seeking to protect. Um, and the AFP has a very good uh, capability in camera called the Victim Identification Team. We can actually identify and track uh, images of children and match those against other known images elsewhere to put pieces of the puzzle together to try and save kids. And that's the primary responsibility here. Is that overt nature worrying, the fact that people are just sharing info over Facebook? Uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that they're necessarily <coughs> sharing explicit images on Facebook, although we have seen examples of that. Um, but what I'd say is um, mainstream platforms um, provide an opportunity for people to communicate, provide an opportunity for people to network, uh, and that's where we can identify people who come together and would want to share this stuff. Um, and that's why I say it's not just about the dark web, it's not just about uh, someone hiding in a dark corner uh, sharing this stuff through encryption. Um, these people will op take any opportunity and any means of communication available to them to do this. Um, but we absolutely have seen cases of sophisticated encryption. We absolutely see, see cases of online storage, uh, not on hard drives. And that's where some of our specialist forensics and technical capabilities, along with the skills of the South Australian police detectives, um, are so effective together into getting the job done. For any of those South Australian people that have been arrested this year using um, platforms like Facebook and Instagram? Uh, yes, absolutely, and some of the reports we've received have been uh, ind indicating um, those types of platforms, and I don't want to go into the specifics of each one, um, but those types of platforms are used as, as, as identifiers and markers for us to commence our investigations. But ultimately, um, we're after identifying the person at the end of the computer, um, and, and they get pretty much a rude shock when the police come through their door. And I think that's the important message to send. This is not online, virtual, or some sort of abstract cyber behaviour. These are real people in South Australia accessing this material and, uh, and indeed uploading it. Um, and there are kids at risk here in South Australia, and that's our job to look for and to identify and bring them to safety. So you say that a lot of the victims are in Southeast Asia, but um, have you seen any examples of these people in South Australia that you've arrested this year actually exploiting children? Uh, the work of this team has included since January the arrest of a chap for uh, abusing a child in South Australia and that child was uh, rescued from that, from that danger. So it is not only offshore, it is also here. And, and just reinforcing what was said, I mean, this is about the safety of children. This is not about someone sitting in a room looking at images. For every one of those images, there's being a child violated or you know, exposed to danger. So uh, uh, I don't think it, you can speak highly enough of the, of the work of the team and... Uh, and their specialisation and, and what they, their, their purpose is, you know, is to save these children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You.